Okay, I've got a, an interesting exercise uh, and an observation to get you to do, uh, which serves many purposes, and uh, one of which is to be awake more, to catch something that has been happening all your life that you've never noticed, and in that process, of course, that's awakening your mind, making you more um, aware, more sharp of things, uh, more present. And the second thing is to then, or second part, is to then see that you are doing something without being aware that you've been doing it. You will now start to catch yourself and change the way or what you are doing in the subject of this exercise. Right, so the, the thing we're looking for is how people start to respond to a question or a comment with saying no and then continue in the affirmative. So for example, you say, well, that's a very nice shirt you're wearing. And you go, no, 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 yeah, it's really great. It's comfortable and I love it. It's one of my favorite shirts. So that's the sort of thing. You might have noticed people do that in this, uh, how's your food tonight? No, no, it's really good. It's like, what is it? People are crazy? Yeah. So start watching for people doing this, starting to say something with, answer something with a no, and then continuing with a positive, with something in the affirmative. I said, well, why are we answering with the negative only to follow with the positive? It's very bizarre. And it's completely automatic, and people do not know they're doing it. Now, you're doing it, and you don't, do not know you're doing it. When you start looking for this, you'll start to see, wow, I never thought about it, how often this happens, but it happens a lot. So that's what you're here to do, is to catch people doing it and then don't say anything to them, let them do what they want. You're not here to change anyone but yourself. But to catch them doing it and then catch yourself doing it and change yourself. So you no longer will start with saying no, yes, so and so on. Okay? Stop yourself. Never start an answer with a no, unless it is a no, obviously. Now, what's really fascinating, I've been studying this globally and talking to people from other countries and other cultures. For example, a Colombian friend who lives in Panama and her work takes her through the entire Central South America and Caribbean. So this is a very huge territory that she's in every country in this territory. And then there's multiple languages because you have English in the Caribbean, you have Spanish in much of Central South America and Portuguese in Brazil two languages, she speaks all of them. And she said, yes, all over, they do exactly the same thing. So it's in multiple languages, it's in multiple cultures, it's in multiple countries. Now another one we looked at was in uh, Europe and Indonesia. Uh, one friend is Indonesian, lived in Italy. She said, yes, in Italy they do that. And in Indonesia they do that. So in Bahasa, in Malay, in, in Italian, in Spanish, Portuguese, English, so many languages, so many cultures, people are doing it. So it is not something like one commented, the, the uh, Colombian said, well, it's our Catholic culture, we're always trying to negate ourselves, no, I'm not worthy of something. Well, that doesn't make sense, because you know where I saw it the most was in Montreal, in, in the Jewish community. The Jews are really, it's always, no, 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 no. I see it as saying, no, you are wrong, and I'm right, and this is what it is. So they, they tend to like to do this. Um, you're wrong, I'm right. So I see it as people saying, no, you're wrong, and I'm going to tell you what's right. Even if it is the same thing, but it's a matter of taking power in the conversation to say, it doesn't matter what you think, I am smarter, I am in control. So that's my view, as I've seen it in some people. The point is, it's all automatic, robotic. You don't know it, so you're doing it in your sleep. So what we want to do is observing this and then stopping ourselves from doing it. It makes you more aware, which means you're exercising your ability to be aware. You're exercising an, a, a, the mind to be present. Present for what's going on around you, present for what you're doing, what you're saying. So. This presence develops a willpower, and the willpower and the consciousness of what you are saying means that you will eventually 
not stick your foot in your mouth so often. Because here is a great exercise to which you will be aware of what you're going to say before you say it, so that in other instances, you will not say something out of place or harmful or um, obstructive to somebody that could hurt their feelings or say something stupid and stick your foot in your mouth. So this is a fantastic exercise because it develops so many things at the same time. And the beauty is it is a constant, meaning every moment of the day you can be practicing this exercise. Why I like this is practical like my first book called Practical Mysticism. It's practical. Because you can meditate two hours every day and you won't get anywhere close to what this exercise will give you, which doesn't take a second out of your day. Right? In this exercise, imagine, you're not taking time to do it. You are observing what is happening anyway. Because you're just observing conversation. You're observing your own thoughts before you speak. So it doesn't take time to do this. Whereas two hours of meditation is generally, for most people, a two-hour nap. Okay? Let's face it. Most people are not really meditating. They're napping. When people, oh, what a great meditation. I dreamt I was a butterfly and I flew across the universe. Okay? This isn't meditation. It's daydreaming. It's napping. Buddha said, and Buddha did, said meditation, true meditation, is the exercise of the willpower over the mind to keep it focused to the extent that it is said that Buddha sat in a puddle of sweat from the intensity of his mental focus. And it's true, as we practice this in, in breathing, in internal martial arts, Qigong for example, again, if you've got the right teacher, if you are doing it correctly, you'll break out into an intense sweat by the focus of your concentration. So. Here, you don't have to break out into a sweat. You don't have to waste two hours a day sitting, meditating, and really daydreaming and napping. Uh, you can do this constantly, all day, every day, and it'll bring you a lot of benefits. So, now, what I want to hear back from you is your results. How do you notice that, oh my God, I've discovered that, yeah, people say it. I never thought they did. I never noticed it. So, you're awakening. I want you to do note at the end of the day or as many times as possible. How many times did I start off with saying, no, 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 then yes. And how many times did I say, yes, catch yourself, where you were going to say no, but you stopped yourself from saying no, and you said it positively. And then we look at over time by keeping account of, I did it six times today where I said no, then yes. I did it three times where I caught myself and didn't say no. And you watch that number diminish so you're keeping a logbook of sorts of how many times you did each of those things and you keep that logbook and then you start to see, did you go for a month without saying no at the beginning of your responses? Okay. And additionally, I want to hear if there's any cultures that do not do this. Uh, one who said, the Indonesian who said that she noticed it in Italy said that they didn't seem to do it in the Northern European countries. She didn't notice it there. So let's get extra validation if that's true or not. And for any other countries, are there any countries or cultures that do not do this? And which countries and cultures do do this? Okay, so there's another exercise for you from your own personal experiences of wherever you have lived. We certainly know it in Canada, in the US, in New Zealand, countries I've been in, absolutely. Malaysia, yes, even there, the English speakers, because I don't speak. Malay or Bahasa or Tamil or uh, Hokkien or Mandarin. So can't tell you about those cultures and, and languages, but I, wanna, I want to hear. Let's make this a great study and uh, see what, as one example, people are doing to keep themselves in a state of robotic unconscious behavior. So you become awake when you see you're a robot. Okay, it's that simple. You're either a robot and asleep, or you see that you are behaving like a robot and you see that you are asleep. Therefore, you must be awake at that moment. That's why our work of awakening is simply observation. In the observation of my unconscious behavior, 
I am conscious at that moment. And that's the lucid waking exercise where you go for a walk and you put in deliberate effort to register in your mind every little thing you see, everything you hear, smell, and sense. Right? So conscious effort is what we need. And here is a great way to do it because you're inundated with examples for this one particular observation. Okay, good luck. Ask any questions you have, of course, as always.